my husband and me some iced coffee in this mug. So I'm feeling pretty good, ready to go. It's time for another MLM video. And this one gets juicy. Or should I say oily? What's up? It's Madison Harnish back here in my blue kitchen. This time I thought I'd blend in to my kitchen with the blue shirt. And today I'm going to be discussing Young Living. Young Living is an MLM that absolutely perplexes me. If this is your first time watching me and one of my videos and you don't really know what an MLM is, first off, hi, how are you? I love you. And second off, I'll be linking some uh, uh, sources down in the description so you can find out more about what an MLM is so that you can kind of go even more in depth if you choose to and want to. So check out the description box for all of those things after watching this video. I don't know what that was. <laughs> For those who don't know, Young Living is a slimy, slick, yes, I'm going to use a lot of oil puns in this video, essential snake oil company with an insane founder and a history of peddling bull crap. Today, I wanna go deep in depth into Young Living's deception and go into all of the crazy claims both they and their distributors have made, as well as the repercussion or impact of some of the unsubstantiated, unsubstantiated, I cannot say that, alternative medicine practices, and of course, last but not least, the infamous founder story of Gary Young, the founder of Young Living. Well, let's dive on into it. So, Young Living received its claim to fame when Facebook moms began relentlessly shilling out essential oil products, saying it will cure pretty much everything from like depression to cancer to an itch on your back. There's an essential oil that a Facebook mom will prescribe to you for anything. I thought that a funny way to start this video would be to go over some really wonderful um, screen grabs of Facebook moms recommending or using essential oils in a really bizarre way just to show you the crazy lengths that they will go to. Of course, the subreddit anti-MLM goes over this a lot and has a lot of different posts, so if you like these memes, I definitely suggest checking that out. Ooh. <laughs> She's like a little diva. She always wants the camera. I'm gonna be reading from my phone, so I apologize if I'm looking down. This one's a really long post, but I think they're pretty funny. I talk about these oils so much because y'all, they have changed my every single way that I use to live my life. I want that for people. I do know. I have friends reading this who are like, you cray. I have zero interest in your weird hippie oils but are maybe wondering why I haven't shut up about them for over four years. So let me answer some facts about oils for you. Do they really work as well as everyone says? Um, yes, really. Do you think I've been dumping water all over my body for the last four years? Little weird wink tongue face thing, don't make me do it, I really can't, I don't know. I'm afraid I'll get oils and not use them. Are they gonna sit on my shelf? They look complicated. Yeah, a little tiny oil thing looks complicated. What kind of friends do you have, Facebook mom? Okay, if my crazy boys can use oils often and safely, I promise so can you. Really. Plus, we've got a community of over 150 families on our team who are figuring this out too. And you get me! I will hold your hand every step of the way, little heart. Oh, because she's so caring. Can I use them with my kids? Yes! For sure. And I'll help you to know how to do it safely and easily. Yeah, because kids having extreme essential oil reactions isn't a thing. Just kidding. It actually is. Don't use essential oils on your kids, please. Is there a reason to go with Young Living over the other bajillion other brands I've seen? She said other twice. That, that wasn't me just speaking weirdly, even though I do sometimes. A thousand yeses. Remember, when I said you can use oils on kiddos safely, that has to do with smart usage, yes. But also it's about what you're using. Brand matters, folks.
Okay. Okay, fine. I will get some of your magical plant juice and try these crazy oils. How do I do it? I love how she's like creating a successful sale on this Facebook post, like a hypothetical successful sale, probably because she has never like made an actual successful sale before and she just like has to boost her ego a little bit. Yes, I'm so freaking excited for you. Shoot me a message and I'll hook you up with a deal just for my fave peeps. Kissy face, celebration face, and the little emoji. Yeah, there's there's a lot of BS in that. I just think the one that I have the biggest argument with is like using essential oils on your kids. Okay, next post. This week in my bedroom oil text class, we have been talking about seven oils that saved my marriage from intimate struggles. Intimate? Did I really just say that? Intimacy struggles during my postpartum journey. That's really rough. I feel like that's like an insecurity every woman has and by saying essential oils will, will cure it, it's like trying to get at other women's insecurities after having a baby and maybe feeling like out of shape or less sexy or whatever. No, don't do that. Cypress, think increased circulation. Velour, think increased confidence. Orange, think increased happiness. Sensation, it's all in the name. Think increased sensation. Little like winky kissy face, like as if she's trying to be cheeky about it. Clary Sage, think increased lubrication and balanced hormones. Lang Lang, think increased sexual energy. And Joy, the original name for this oil blend was Love. Think a wonderful way to help you get in the mood. I love how she says think, because this is probably when all the backlash for saying like this essential oil does this is happening. So she's saying think it does this so that she like doesn't make any false claims, but it's just kind of like, it's really deceptive and And these are just the first seven oils of many that can help address bedroom issues and enhance intimacy in a chemical free and healing way. You should probably go ahead and get yourself on the list for the next sexy oils text class. You really don't want to miss out with a little heart once again. I feel like these hun bots will literally make up a reason of why this essential oil is good for anything. It kind of shows you just how like desperate they are to sell something. I don't even know if they believe this. If they believe this truly that these essential oils do all of these things, that's really sad and a sad state of humanity that we're living in. <laughs> this is the worst one. Next MLM post. These two oils have been such a lifesaver. With the sniffles and illnesses this past season, I don't know what I would do without these. Sleepy Eyes has helped this mama finally get 8 hours of sleep at night. I have been rubbing these on the bottom of her baby's names, feet, and diffusing it in her room at night. Such a life changer and a much happier, more rested babe. Two hearts. I just like, I'm scared for this child. I hope she doesn't have any like bad reaction to it. Like I feel like babies and animals are so sensitive. I know literally I have two cats and cats are allergic to essential oils. It literally coats their skin, makes their fur fall off. So it scares me. Okay, here's another post. Look y'all, Jesus did not die on the cross for you to kill yourself with toxic candles and grocery store essential oils. The starter bunder, bun, bunder, I can't, this is ruining my speech and my confidence. The starter bundle is on sale while supplies last. Freaking do it! It's less than your last trip to Target was and you probably didn't even need that stuff. Yeah, because you need essential oils. I just hate like, like don't guilt trip someone by bringing their religion into play to get them to buy essential oils. Like that's so wrong. Like do we not have more dignity than that? Are we really stooping that low nowadays? But yeah, that's just a small example of some Young Living MLM Facebook posts that you will see from Young Living Hunbots. Whew, I need a break. By the way, I just realized my mic wasn't recording, so that audio probably sounded a lot different than this audio does right now. Sorry for that if it's... Weird. Yeah. 
Those posts definitely display the bizarre, wild claims made by those involved with Young Living. But let's dive a little bit deeper into that. According to consumerreports.org, it's extremely hard to police false or unsubstantiated claims made by MLM companies just in general. Since a lot of independent consultants are making these claims, it's really easy for an MLM company to say, we were involved with that or we didn't agree to that. The Food and Drug Administration, AKA the FDA, that rhymed, is the entity that polices unsubstantiated claims. Why do I keep trying to say that, unsubstantiated, unsubstantiated. <laughs> Guys, help me. That's why companies can't launch ads saying our pills will cure your cancer without extensive evidence backed by clinical studies. The FDA will crack down on you. With traditional retail, with regular employees, it's easy or relatively so to train your employees on what to say and what not to say. In multi-level work from home companies like Young Living, enforcing the policy on what to say is much harder. That's definitely true. Not that Young Living really makes an effort to push back on wild claims. A distributor literally tweeted out that essential oils could help protect you from your Ebola. Like, that's too much. It's James Charles all over again. The FDA literally showed up at the company's headquarters over that post. So now I'm going to read out literally actual quotes that Young Living consultants have made. As seen on the FDA warning letter that they sent to Young Living, they literally sent a warning letter to Young Living about these claims because they're so wild and bizarre and they're becoming such a big issue that FDA had to try and shut it down. So. These are actual quotes that I'm about to read that consultants have made. Since I've become an avid Young Living essential oil user, I have learned all about the antimicrobial, microbial <laughs> properties of so many oils, including antiviral constituents and many of our essential oils. I think that this entire video is just showcasing my lack of education, so I'm sorry about that. So that was one. Viruses, including Ebola, are no match for young living essential oils. You've got to be kidding me. It's one thing to tell you, people to put essential oils on their baby's feet. It's another thing to tell them it will rid them of Ebola. Oh, thieves is a highly antimicrobial and it could help against Ebola. Another consultant made that claim. Immupower would be a top choice as well. Immupower is a blended oil containing, there's a list, I'm not gonna read out the list of essential oils, I just really don't care that much and I hope you don't either, does it really matter? Every single one of these oils have antiviral properties. It just feels like they're pulling oils out of a hat and being like, you get antiviral properties, you get antiviral properties. Like, come on. <sighs> Regular use of rosemary essential oil may help prevent diseases associated with free radicals, including cancer and heart disease. That's what we were missing, guys. It's just rosemary oil. Heart disease is literally the number one cause of death in America. We just needed rosemary oil, guys. Duh, doctors, are you listening to this? Rosemary oil, dummies, what are you thinking? Rosemary research in regards to Alzheimer's disease showed aromatherapy as a potential treatment for the cognitive, e.g. memory, impairments caused by dementia. My mom is a gerontologist, which is like working with older people. So we've talked a lot about Alzheimer's disease and dementia and it's literally when tiny holes are formed in your brain i don't think rosemary can fix holes in your brain everyone gets rosemary oil and um and no more diseases in the world it was just rosemary oil guys rosemary has antimicrobial and antiseptic qualities that may help eliminate eczema and dermatitis as well so it's like it causes your dementia but it also can get rid of that rash so <sighs> but yeah the list of claims go on and on literally it's insane i'm linking the fda warning letter down below as well if you want to read through all of the crazy claims about essential oils but they go on like 
every single essential oil cures some wild disease or terrible ailment that so many people have and it just it blows my mind funny enough when you look through these claims most of them are about very very unfortunate diseases that a lot of people struggle with there's none about like hey does your toe hurt this essential oil helps that there's no like small things that these essential oils are curing it's all somehow these like very common diseases that many people struggle with or ailments that many people struggle with that usually don't have a cure and are seen as like very tragic things to deal with. This fits with the common narrative of these young living distributors, which is preying on the weak and claiming that their oils will fix all of it when these people are maybe at a very vulnerable moment in their life and are feeling lost with no other place to turn. The whole thing is extremely predatory in nature, but that brings up the question, who's at fault? The distributor? or the company, Young Living, for all of these claims. The fact of the matter is making claims like these can do some real damage. There's so many opinions and so much noise out there about what the right health choice is that people might not know exactly what to do or they might just go with the person who's talking the loudest. Decision fatigue is a real thing. And if you're struggling with something and you don't know where to turn, and there's all these different options in front of you, you're gonna go with the avenue of the least amount of struggle. And sometimes just being real, getting an appointment with a dermatologist or a doctor and, or an expert who can really give you the most unbiased and scientifically backed version of what to do for yourself and your ailments might be a lot of hoops to jump through. If this person's saying this essential oil will cure all of those things, it might be easier for people just to go with that. They may even stop trusting their own instincts and their body's harsh reactions to the essential oils simply because they want so badly to believe in the cure that these humbots are selling. In my opinion, both Young Living and its distributors are at fault. Young Living should be very clear and strict regarding what can be said and what cannot be said about the potential for their essential oils. Their distributors are representing their company. So for the distributors to make all these claims and for Young Living to just turn around and say, oh, that wasn't us. We didn't make those claims. We don't agree with them, but we don't have any control over what they say. is just like wrong and stupid. These people are literally representing your company do better. A recent class action lawsuit claims that Young Living is a cult-like pyramid scheme that makes false claims regarding its business model, or rather just in general, it makes false claims. I'm gonna be looking down because I'm reading off of this. I don't wanna miss anything. The class action claims that to be eligible to receive commission, members are required to enroll in the Essential Rewards Program. This enrollment is maintained by purchasing a monthly minimum amount of Young Living products. Sounds a lot alike Ditto Delivery that I talked about in my Amway video. This amount may be more than $100 a month that you have to buy in essential oils, which is insane. To have that large of an amount of essential oils every month, it makes sense why they're trying so desperately to get rid of it. I mean, if you had to buy like this huge bulk of essential oils, you'd be like, this will help you cure whatever you're dealing with. Like, please just get it off of my hands. I have to buy a hundred dollars worth of more product next month and I don't want more essential oils. I'm so sick of them. Like I could see that being a huge thing. Like if that was me and I had to buy essential oils constantly, I would be like, please just get these off of my hands. I'll do whatever you want. In my previous MLM videos, we talked about how literally more than 90% of people never make money from MLM companies and from being MLM distributors. But imagine if on top of that, you were also required to purchase a monthly amount that was over a hundred dollars in essential oils. You literally can't sell them fast enough. It's really wrong. And then you're getting more and more in debt, having to buy more and more essential oils. I think my cat's playing with literally a pebble. What? And you're just trying so hard to sell the essential oils faster than you're purchasing them just so you can try and stay afloat. Young Living also allegedly refuses to pay their members monthly commissions if they did not earn more than $25 in a single month, which statistically speaking is definitely more than the majority of their independent consultants. So think of how much money they're actually making and saving by just not paying the majority of their consultants. That literally means that Young Living doesn't pay 90% of its consultants and gets to pocket all of that money. Like, think about it.
that adds up. The average loss for Young Living members in 2016 was reportedly $1,175. Not quite the successful lifestyle represented by Young Living. So it just seems like crummy people completely surround the Young Living empire, if you'd call it. But you can't help but wonder, who founded this company? And well, you guessed it, a really crummy person. The Illuminati here on YouTube made a great video on the Young Living founder, Gary Young, that I'll link below that video for a more in-depth version of his story. For the sake of time today, I'm just gonna go over like the high points of who Gary Young is as a person. And it definitely allows you to understand why Young Living is the way that it is. So let's do it. I'm gonna try not to cry during it too, which you'll understand why I say that after I finish talking about it. Okay, so Gary's story really starts with his fake degree. It kind of feels like growing up, Gary had this weird complex of always wanting to be a doctor, but that he could never actually follow through on his education. So instead he just pretended to have a degree. Then in 1981, he opened a clinic in Spokane, Washington, Spokane, I forget how it's pronounced, using his degree, Gary was arrested for practicing medicine without a license, but only spent 30 days in prison. In 1982, I like, like literally that's how bad this is. It's literally gonna make me cry if I say it. In 1982, Gary talked his wife at the time, Donna Young, into giving birth in a hot tub at his clinic. He then held the little girl underwater, this little tiny baby girl underwater for an hour until she died. <sighs> the coroner said she died of oxygen deprivation. And if Gary didn't hold her underwater, that she would have been totally fine. But it doesn't seem like there are any repercussions after that on Gary Young. In 1983, he was asked by an undercover cop about performing an underwater birth. Gary offered him one as well as prenatal care and claimed he could cure the, pop, the, the pops. He could cure the cops mom's cancer. Again, he was arrested for practicing medicine without a license. This time, he only spent 60 days in prison. The first time, he only spent 30 days in prison. The second time, only 60 days in prison. It blows my mind that he's literally a baby killer and that there's people who are still in jail for minor drug possessions that are now legal in the states that they're in jail. Like that just, it blows my mind. So you can see where Young Living gets all of its wild claims from the fact that the founder has been making his own wild claims for quite some time now. Except remember this man with this past has now made a fortune off of the Young Living company. Gary Young also paid for a fake master's degree and faked a doctorate in naturopathy from Bernadine University, a diploma mill, which is a company that literally sells fake diplomas that later ended up getting busted. Clearly this dude has a complex for wanting to be a guy who cures things. So all of these essential oil pure-alls make a lot of sense. And you can see the connections and patterns. Thank you to the Reddit post dripping-peaches for all of this detailed info on Gary Young. I'll also link that post below. It has even more information if you would like to read it. It gets really depressing. Gary Young also has a past of abuse on his family, anger outbursts, getting arrested multiple times, setting up multiple fake clinics and so on. <sighs> yeah, it's crazy. In my Arbonne video, I talked about how unfortunately Arbonne can't get shut down and be labeled a scam because it's still seen as a legitimate company, but I don't believe that this is the case for Young Living. These health claims and business practices have done so much damage. Sorry that ended on a really rough note. You know, obviously it started off light hearted with all the, you know, Facebook posts and memes, but uh, that just blows my mind. Gary Young, it's so wrong. It's so wrong and it kind of bums me out. I'm a little bummed out. Sorry about that. Let me know in the comments below what other MLM videos you'd like to see. I got a request for Beachbody so that MLM video is definitely coming soon and I'm excited for that. And until next time, have a good one.